Now some will hear this and respond in anger. This seems narrow, this seems intolerant, but we have a responsibility to deal in facts. Recently, Pope Francis ignited a fierce controversy with remarks that he delivered at a large youth event in Singapore. Here's the Vatican's official translation of the paragraph that made global headlines. One of the things that has impressed me most about the young people here is your capacity for interfaith dialogue. This is very important because if you start arguing, my religion is more important than yours, or mine is the true one, yours is not true, where does this lead? Somebody answer. A young person answers, destruction. That is correct. All religions are paths to God. I will use an analogy. They are like different languages that express the divine. But God is for everyone, and therefore we are all God's children. But my God is more important than yours. Is this true? There is only one God, and religions are like languages, paths to reach God. Some Sikh, some Muslim, some Hindu, some Christian. Before I offer anything by way of response, let's just read some scripture together. In John chapter 14, Jesus is preparing to go to the cross, and as he does so, he offers his disciples the following words of comfort. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The book of Acts, chapter 3, records the incredible moment wherein the Apostle Peter heals a lame beggar by the power of Jesus' name. Acts, chapter 4, records Peter's subsequent arrest and interrogation by the men who had condemned Jesus to death. When these men demanded an explanation, the Apostle Peter responded as follows. Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. In his first letter to Timothy, Paul is giving essential instruction for faithful pastoral ministry. He writes, Therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all. The sad but unavoidable fact here is this. The Pope's words are directly opposed to the clear teaching of Jesus and his apostles. Jesus came as the savior of the world precisely because it's only through Jesus that the world can be saved. This doesn't mean we hate our Muslim friends or our Hindu neighbors. No, if we're faithful Christians, we love them and we want them to be saved too. But that means repenting and trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only savior for everyone, everywhere. Or to use the apostle Paul's words, that means turning to God from idols to serve the living and true God. The Apostle John put it this way, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Now some will hear this and respond in anger. This seems narrow, this seems intolerant, but we have a responsibility to deal in facts. And the fact is, only Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. Only Jesus rose from the grave in victory over death, and only Jesus can offer you full forgiveness and a place in heaven. And the good news is that he wants to, that this offer is for you, that whoever you are, wherever you come from, whatever your religious background up to this point, the gospel is for you. The good news of salvation, redemption, reconciliation with God through faith in Jesus Christ 
is for you. I'll give the final word to the Apostle Paul. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hey, thanks so much for watching the video. I hope it was helpful. If you have questions about Jesus, about the Bible, we'd love to help. If you're in the San Diego area, I hope you'll come give us a visit at Prospect Avenue Baptist Church. But whoever you are, wherever you may be, if you have questions about Jesus, we'd love to help get those questions answered. Thanks and God bless.